We are going to try something a little bit different today. I've got my audio recorded on my laptop, my video recorded on my phone. I was going to kind of see what happens. I've already done this take once, but forgot to actually press record on the audio. So I've already done half of this video uh, and then forgot to record on the audio. So we're already off to teething difficulties. But I was just looking at some of the videos and the quality is kind of low. And I think obviously my phone camera is going to be higher quality than my laptop camera so we're just gonna see how it works if it doesn't work then it doesn't work but it's about being experimental in it this is a small channel so we can kind of do what we want and just see how it how it works but today ELF power rankings oh my goodness what a week <laughs> some great games so all-time classic games some players that broke out and did extremely well we're gonna talk about all of it uh, throughout the week but today's gonna to be power rankings I'm just gonna talk about like a wrap-up for each team in each game and then I'm gonna do a stock market and then I'm gonna do the same thing I did last week of what they need to do to win this week. So, wow. Where to start? <laughs> Let's start from the bottom because Milan were terrible. They weren't great. Defensively, solid. Zachary Blair has picked up where he left off. One of the best inside linebackers in the league. Well, you know, him and AJ are the American dudes in the inside and obviously Dawson Dales. But he looks great. He was buzzing around everywhere. That's kind of where the praise ends. <laughs> They didn't do much apart from that. Like they, they allowed a lot of turnovers. The first play of the game was a turnover. They threw multiple interceptions. Uh, they had dropped passes. They didn't get the ball to Flores Calderon nearly enough. The offensive line didn't create holes for Patrick Carr. Zach Bronkhurst got a lot of turnovers. It was just not good. It was not good football. It was rather un it was uncreative play calling. It was it was poor. Really poor. 32 nothing was the final score, and they didn't really ever look like they were going to do anything. I, I, I literally, I think, called it during the stream. I did the whole stream of every game. I think, I can't remember if I did, but I think I called it. I was like, I don't even think they're going to score in this drive. And then they throw a pick to Mensa. Like, they, they just didn't look good. And then last for me, uh, they have the most to prove. Every other team in the league, even the ones I had lower in the power rankings, showed something. Showed some kind of, like... Oh, this could be really good for them. Or, oh, I didn't think he would be as good as he was. Milan didn't have that. They really didn't. But they're going to come in at 17 and they've dropped four places. I was kind of hot on them for the defensive line I thought could be pretty good. And Zach I thought they could have a good defense and a bit of a run and gun offense. And it was very clear they were missing Tommy Wilson. I think that was kind of a big thing. I think they planned with Tommy a lot more and obviously he's left. And they just, they lacked, they lacked any kind of diversity or creativity on offense and that really killed them the 16 have the enthroners the fair of our enthroners they've dropped one place but that does not mean i do not like them more than i did last time i actually have a big fan of what they did jack mangle looked a lot better than i thought he would do like he didn't throw any picks he had a, he had a turnover to fumble but it was just a really good defensive player i think rather than a really poor offensive one snapping issues killed them uh they kind of stalled a little bit you know they're playing vienna they're playing a very hard game a really tough defense, but they showed flashes. Special teams wasn't great, but Robitaille kind of kicked off where he le like picked up where he left off. He was great as well. So explosive, still scored. Uh, Rodion's back from injury, which I think is one of the things I was happiest about. It's like seeing Dion come back from that injury and just get a pick six, which is like his trademark play, was like a golden moment for me during this this week. So I was ha super happy for him. Ben Holmes looks hit and miss, I think. Some of his accuracy is a bit like, hmm, it was a bit rusty. But now that he's worked into it, maybe he'll kind of level up a little bit. But he looked a little bit rusty. Uh, didn't light the world on fire. Jordan Buer did, though. <laughs> Jordan Buer was incredible. The, the mystical touchdown, though, the one that definitely won a touchdown. I don't know how the refs called that. And then Chafin and the Raiders had a very similar one where he kind of caught the ball, didn't maintain possession to the ground. They called it incomplete. So I think... The referees kind of need to get together and kind of decide how they're going to call those kind of plays because very similar the Schaefer play on the back right corner of Milan and obviously the far left corner of uh, for the Raiders on the Enthroners uh, and the far left corner for what the Vikings versus the Enthroners. It's a very similar play, but one got called touchdown, one didn't. So I think we need to kind of define those rule sets a little bit more. At number 15, I have the Heltovic Mercenaries, who are up by two. They were last, and now they're certainly not. I think they could beat Milan. I really do. Offensively, Cotton Aiken is the fucking dude. And then, he obviously, you got the birth of a new 
mythical receiver of Anthony fucking Brown. They only really threw to him. They didn't get very many other receivers involved. But for me, that's fine. Like, if it's working, it's working. Anthony Brown looked great. Really solid player. Can catch on the intermediate routes. Big, deep threat. That I thought they were kind of lacking a deep threat, but it looks like Anthony Brown can be that. Run game was there. Carlton Aiken was kind of running for his life, though, behind the offensive line. The offensive line is not good. <laughs> like, Dragons and them really struggled with their offensive lines. But overall, I was impressed. I, I didn't think they would... As it would be a close game, because I thought both of the teams were going to be not great. But they both showed flashes that are very interesting. And I'd like just to keep track of that throughout the year. It's going to be it's going to be good. I think that both of them will kind of still finish lower. But they were. it was a fun game. Like it was just a fun game to watch, and I enjoyed it. Cologne at number 14, dropped by two. They burned out. They burned out. They got really good start, like really good start. Isaiah Weed looked great. Gerald Alman, who looked awesome, looked like a top-level running back. Like he could have a real breakout season this year. And then they fucked it. <laughs> like they, were, uh, they scored first. They were doing well. They kind of fired, you know, it's a run fire. So they scored a couple touchdowns. And then he got all the way up just before the half. 90 yard pick. Kills all the momentum. They never looked comfortable ever again after that happened. Because obviously they ran fire. Then it scored. Came out of the half. Scored again. Scored again. Scored again. So Cologne started really well. Lost all, the, lost all the momentum. Finished poorly. But I do think that they can potentially pick up a few wins. I think them and Madrid will be an interesting one. I think them and Hamburg is going to be a really interesting one. But Connor Weddington looks good. I just think they need to get him the ball more. Jared Almond looks like he could be ready for a breakout year. And Isaiah Weed impressed. I was obviously skeptical. GFL 2 to the left, big jump, but I was impressed. He did, he did good. And number 13, very similarly, the Prague Lions. They have gone up one, but they did exactly the same thing as Cologne, where they started well. Tavir Hills Jackson looks good though. I was surprised how good Tavir Hills Jackson looks. Because I was a bit on the fence with him. Is he just a deep ball merchant? But no, he has great hands and he looks like he can like be a guy that can take short passes too. Redeem Kalios was great. We knew that he would be good. It was good for him to get a touchdown on his return back to his home country. So that was always awesome to see. But they just burned out, man. They just they started so well. A big play with Tavir Hills Jackson. Force fumble at the one. 99 yard touchdown for Jarvis McClam, and they never looked the same. <laughs> They picked a bit of momentum off. Obviously, it got delayed due to weather. They came back. They conceded again immediately, but then they got on the next drive, and that drive lasted about 30 real-time minutes. I didn't time it, but it lasted the whole of the halftime in the other game, and it just stalled them. Flags on flags on flags, and penalties, and incompletions that stopped the clock, and it just really held them up. Like, it really just slowed the game down. I don't think that's what Prague wanted. I think Prague need to be a fast team. Because they got fast players. They got sneaky, fast players. But they just didn't really they didn't really use it as effectively as I think they could. But they did still end up with a reasonable score. It's 31-21. But against Hamburg, it's, it, it was a close game. But they, they just need to be able to maintain that momentum. But there's absolutely potential there. That's why I moved them up. Just to, just a touch. Moving up more than just a touch. I'm sure some people are going to be happy about this. Barcelona Dragons at number 12. Wow. Donadelli looks awesome. Donadelli looks real good. Levi Lewis was slower. Now, he hasn't kicked off yet. He was fighting for his life behind a poor offensive line. How about Jai Jackson, though? How about Jai Jackson? He got a couple of sacks. Told you he would be good in a different scheme, and he damn is. Mushai in the D tackle, the British guy. I I didn't. I was gonna be. I was real. I was like, I don't really know what they signed him for. I, I, I was concerned. His pad level wasn't great. I didn't think he had the strength, but he absolutely proved me wrong. Stephen McCluskey as well. Fuck yeah. I didn't think that he would be great either. I thought that he'd be a, a blocking guy. I was like, why? Well, I, you know, I was a bit concerned about spending an E on a guy that was going to be predominantly a blocker. But no, he proved me wrong too. Stephen McCluskey did damn well, and he's obviously got that dog in him. Because he was ready to scrap. <laughs> Instead of on the stream, I kind of like it when players have got a little bit of, uh, you know, buying into the system, ready to just fight for their teammates. I, I thought it was cool. So, Steve McCoskey proved me wrong. Jared Jackson proved me right. Mushai proved me wrong as well, which I'm always happy to see players prove me wrong. Like, I think some people kind of 
see it as disrespect to give an evaluation or are like, oh, you know, fuck you, I proved you wrong. I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> I love it. I love it when players like go above my expectations. I think it's great. It makes me better, makes them play better. I think it's a win-win. But Barcelona, defensively good, but not not fantastic. Some holes, obviously the, the players that played well, but there are still some some holes within that defense. Kade played well in his debut. Kade is still one of the favorites for Rookie of the Year. And moving on to 11, Hamburg beat Prague. And now the only team on this list, hint, hint, that hasn't moved. I thought they would beat Prague, and they did. I thought it would be close, and it kind of was. Jarvis is still Jarvis. Is Jury still out on Javerius Smith? I'm still not 100%. I need, maybe need to go back and watch some of the game again, because I was watching simultaneously games at the same time, like three and one at once. But I still need to see a little bit more. I'm not, I've not made up my mind about him. He's kind of like JJ McCarthy, where it's like he has made those big plays, but it's mostly the run game that's facilitating that. Hardin Canido, who I called last year, was could be good. He was. Uh, Humadi is one of the best like, homegrown backs. I think that he's like, extremely good. I think that one-two duo is massively underrated. The offensive line was decent. You know, the other receivers in the team were decent. Defensively, they weren't great, but they were all right. That forced fumbles. Play the like play the week. Outstanding. But then they gave up some easier scores. You know, it was, they kind of just did fine. They were all right. They didn't blow me away. They didn't, you know, except for that one-two punch of those two players. That blew me away. That was incredible. But I still need to see a little bit more from Hamburg. Number 10, Madrid. Haven't played. They dropped two places. But they just haven't played. I need to see them, you know. It's kind of hard for them to be above Hamburg. I just think they've got a better team than Hamburg does. And I think they could beat them. But that's basically it. They just haven't played. So there's not too much to really say about them. And number 9, Berlin Thunder. They lost, but they looked good in the loss. Like they lost to an elite team in Roklaw. They were in it for the last. They were really in it until the end. Like that. If I, I really wish the refs just allowed the Aaron Jackson return to go all the way, they allowed it to stand. Because he, I literally said, "Oh, it's going to be you know a kneel at the end of the at the end of the half." Wouldn't expect much from that. I just fucking Aaron Jackson going down the sideline scores makes it close game again, and he does it again at the end, but it gets called back. Really wish he just let that stand. That could have been an all-time ELF moment. But flags. Flags are a huge thing in every game. So many flags. I'm not sure if it was just discipline on the team side or if it was just the referees maybe being a bit, you know, a bit a bit, a bit keen <laughs> to install their their will. But man, it was it was it was really slowing down some of those games. But Berlin looked very solid. Uh, enjoyed what they bought. Sullivan looked poised. Aaron Jackson looks great. Robin Vilcek looks excellent as always. The offensive line was pretty good. The running game kind of took a little bit to develop, but eventually they got through. Defensively, we kind of know what they are defensively, but they did allow a lot of points. They struggled to deal with running backs out of backfield. We'll get to it when we talk about Rogue Law, but they really struggled with the creativity of Rogue Law offensively. And they're going to play a lot of good offences this year. So hopefully they can shore that up. And the receiving backs seem to be maybe a bit of a meta to beat Berlin. But that's going to round out 9 through 17. I mean, a couple winning teams with Hamburg and Barcelona. Maybe some people would argue they deserve to be higher. I think Barcelona having the biggest jump at four, though, is, is excellent for them. And I've been very strict. I've been very, very hard on Barcelona. They absolutely proved me wrong in, in that game. They looked like fun they looked really fun i said last year with the barcelona dragons they went over they went 2-0 i said how fun they were but then they kind of dropped off they lost 10 in a row but i hope that doesn't happen this year i do hope that we have barcelona be a fun team the ai is currently predicting asi uh, the barcelona dragons to be one of the best so who knows but i'll round out 9 to 17. and number eight the the biggest disappointment of the week munich ravens 27 5. They look they look bad. Man, they really did. Chad Jeffries was doing what he could, but was getting absolutely leveled because the offensive line was so poor. The big thing for the whole of the offseason was look how great their offensive line is. They've got this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. Didn't see much of it. 
Like, Chad was fighting for his life. Chad was running around with his hair on fire. Like, he can do anything. Tommy Ware left the game early. Hopefully, he's okay, but we haven't had any official word from that yet. It's very clear they lack receivers. Like, John Cole is very different. Their offensive identity is completely different, and it's worse than it was last year. That's pretty evident. But John Cole looks like he could be a receiver at this level. It just doesn't look like he's in the best scheme for it. He's more of a a run extension, more of a slot guy, I think, that can take short passes, kind of like, um, kind of maybe like Robitaille, with some occasional deep balls, just use the speed and it's good route running. He just didn't really use it. I don't know if Chad didn't have the time, or if they just didn't get the ball, but they really lack a great receiver core. I think that. I think they do lack that at the moment. And it was on my notes for the preseason. I was a bit concerned about the receivers. I thought Maru Rush is a good number two or number three. But then when they came against the surge and the depth the surge have at receiver, it just made Munich look at levels below them. They've dropped four places. That's the biggest drop of the week. They go down to eight. They're 0-1. They have a lot to sort out. They scored three points offensively. They scored two points defensively. And they never really looked competitive. They got one point of 6-3. You thought maybe. Serge just ran away with it. Serge looked great, but we'll get to them later. But number seven, the Raiders Tyrrell. Now, I was going back and forth with Munich and Raiders, but I gave the edge to the Raiders because they won. But they didn't look excellent. They beat Milan, which are the worst. They had a lot of drops. Schaefer had a lot of drops. And so did the other receivers, not just Schaefer. But Schaefer did have a hell of a lot of really good catches too. He's very hit and miss at the moment for the week. So maybe he's just coming in a little bit, you know, a little not completely locked in. Maybe he's just a bit, you know, pressure got to him a little bit. But he made some great catches, but he also made some bad drops. Running game couldn't get massively started. They had a few instances where they got a couple of runs off, but it wasn't the same as it was last year. Their line was okay, wasn't great, wasn't good. It was very flat. The game was flat. They had a flat offense. Their defense played well with the turnovers. I think that was the kind of thing that went under the radar. Is their defense did do better than I thought they would. But it wasn't a massively convincing win. So I've got them still at seven. But they have still risen up in the power rankings. At number six, the second Austrian team, the Vienna Vikings. Also up one unremarkable win like they they won comfortably but it wasn't exceptional western car isn't playing which is maybe a reason why they they didn't have an a so maybe that was why they would play a little bit worse jordan bow is incredible he's off to an amazing start he's probably like the mvp of the week troy Ore, i said he was gonna be good and he was Run game, Kerry Bajarin is going to be one of the best running backs in the league this year. I said last year he was going to be great, but he split carries three ways, so his stats suffered. But Kerry is going to go for a 1,000 yards. I'm calling it now. Kerry Bajarin looks excellent. The offensive line was awesome. Ben Holmes, a little bit of ring rust perhaps. Not entirely locked in to the MVP candidacy that the Vienna Vikings hope that he's in and Alex thinks that he can do. It's kind of need to see maybe a little bit more. The Androners... Gave them some issues. And they're considered one of the lower teams in the league. So when they play against someone like Roklaw. It's going to be very telling. And honestly I'm favouring Roklaw in that matchup. And number five. Frankfurt Galaxy. Haven't played. Still went up one because Munich was so bad. But haven't played. I think they have a more talented roster. And there's still some things on the lines that I'm concerned about. And maybe the linebacker position. So I would go either... either Either way with Munich or uh, with uh, the Raiders. And with the Vienna Vikings too. But I kind of just gave them the edge. At number four, I've got Paris who went down one because some other teams did better. And again, they haven't played. So this kind of those two are just off of expectations at four and five. I don't feel like you can drop either of them out of the top five because they're both incredible teams. It just, we, just, we need to see it. So it'll take a minute. But number three, the Road Claw Panthers played an all-time classic. Scored 49 points, one of the best defenses. Play calling was phenomenal. It was so good. <laughs> Stephen Duncan looked great. Gentry Adams got multiple receiving touchdowns. The run was great. The passing game was on fire. That is the best offense, I think, of the week. Just creativity. It was 
so fun to watch. Like it was so fun to watch. Then with Fire and Surge, you know, there's the top three that we'll get to in a second. But Rogue Law's just ability to use both of those amazing running backs in ways that we thought they thought they would, but not, you know, we thought they'd just run down the, the throats. But they didn't they use them in the past game. It looked great. It was fun. It was exciting. It scored them a lot of points. Defensively, they were solid, but there was a few maybe miscommunications in the secondary. AJ Wetland is just AJ Wentland. Like, <laughs> he was everywhere, and I cursed the team too. I forgot about that. I cursed Berlin. So there's not really been that many turnovers, and then like the next play was a turnover. <laughs> so apologies for that. But AJ looked phenomenal. He's really going for like that defensive player of the year, I think. If he carries on going this, the system just seems to suit him so well. Multiple tackles for a loss. He looked phenomenal. And number two, Ryan Fire. Controversial. And it's not disrespectful. But they played a worse team. I think power rankings are going to kind of go off the momentum as well. That's why we've seen such big rises and big falls. You've got to go off momentum with power rankings. He just worked the ball. Glenn Tonga. Excellent. The offensive line's phenomenal. Jay Duran's still an MVP. Ryan Winter looked good. McKnight looked good. I was still on the fence about McKnight, but he looked really, really solid. They just they just worked the team. And they just outlasted Cologne in every way. And by the end, it was quite dominant. And it was quite easy for them. But number one, going for the surge. And the reason that is because they absolutely fucking killed the team that we thought would be competitors. The team that I thought would be competitive. I thought it was like top three. I had concerns, but I thought they'd still be able to overcome that. They didn't. And Surge really, really just laid the wood on them. They just looked so much better. So much better. From start to finish, they scored first. They got turnovers. They tackled harder. They just looked better in every single conceivable way. Lewis Geyer is on a fucking mission. I think that he could go over a thousand, potentially. Daryl Stewart looks great. Yannick Myers still phenomenal as well. The offensive line's just excellent. Nicholas Kandar did good at running back. Riley Hennessy's locked in for the year. The defense was phenomenal. Stopping the run, stopping the pass. Honestly, it was just a great showing by the surge. So that will be those power rankings. I think Nicole Kyle Kitchens gets a mention too. For Berlin, he was fucking so good. Like, I miss watching Kyle Kitchens because he was just absolutely dominant. He's definitely a player that stood out for me as, like, maybe the defensive player of the week. Him, someone like Jai, I think, got multiple sacks. The stats aren't available yet on the ELF website. But I guess we'll see, hopefully soon. But there's a lot of contenders. Asia Wentland, obviously, is a contender for, like, defensive player of the week. Stephen Duncan got, like, five touchdowns. So he's, he's a contender. Gentry Adams got multiple even touchdowns. So he's a contender for it. JJ got a rushing touchdown, <laughs> which you haven't seen in a while. It just looks, it was, a, it was a good week. It was a weird week. It was good. I can't wait for week two. We're going to do a whole thing for that. We've got the stock market. I'm going to do a stock market players wise and maybe some teams, but mostly players of like up and down. Maybe not down, maybe just up because I don't want to be like discredit people. And I'm also going to do the what teams need to win for analysis like I did last week because that was fun. It took a while to do, but I enjoyed it. Hopefully this new camera system and audio lockup has worked well. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully it has, but we have multiple angles going on. <laughs> but I just hope that it doesn't look terrible and it actually works. So I guess we'll see. But yeah, that's going to conclude us up here. Uh, schedule's pretty packed because of just want to go back and watch some of the week one games. The streams went well. Thank you everyone for tuning into those. They were good fun good to talk football with a few people i think going forward though i'm going to do one game because like i wasn't able to get up for six hours <laughs> you can imagine the toll that has on my like physical well-being of <laughs> just like i'm hungry i need to go to the toilet but i couldn't because i was there for six hours straight so i think i'll, I'll just pick one game of the week i might do that as like a fan vote on twitter and instagram and stuff like that and uh maybe on youtube maybe a youtube vote let's see what that game I should watch along. But that'll do it. Biggest riser is Barcelona. Biggest faller was Munich. Let me know how you think each team did. Let me know if you have a different one. I'd love to hear everyone's 
feedback and just how they viewed the games because everyone views it differently. Like I thought the play call was terrible in a lot of the games, but some people might have been like, "Well, the defense was just good," which was something that came up in the stream. So I was like, "Yeah, no, the defense is just bad as the offense is. You know, the offense is playing all right. They're just getting mauled by the defense." But yeah, that'll do here. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you later. Thank you and goodbye.